We are at the Shipwreck Museum at Whitefish Point, owned and operated and managed by the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society. With the Edmund Fitzgerald being uh, a big reason a lot of people come up here, there's definitely the element that this museum not only is very visual, but it's also very much of a strong feeling sort of museum that, you know, as as so many people have heard this song, they don't know the actual story, then they come here and they're hit by, my gosh, this is the place that this entire uh, tragedy took place, and it really begins to hit home for a lot of them. At what time was the last time that you had any cause or that you noticed that you uh, had the big girl in front of you? 1900. 1900, he was approximately 15 miles from the high hump at Crisp Point. That's when I was talking to him. He was 15 miles from the land. This is such a vital uh, lighthouse because this is the pivotal marking spot for a lot of freighters going into Whitefish Bay. Since this is the only natural exit and entrance in and out of Lake Superior, all freighters must pass this point, and this lighthouse serves not only as a reminder to uh, begin to slow down, but be on the watch for other traffic going through this area that uh, they don't accidentally uh, collide with another freighter or at least slow down and be cautious. It's a, also a bit of a safety beacon too in a storm that there is a Whitefish Point lighthouse that we're almost into the safety of the bay and that we're going to be okay. It really feels like I'm coming home. Sort of a nice relaxed feeling for uh, mariners coming across this area. The Fresnel lens was designed and developed specifically for the lighthouse tower at the top. So a beam of light could be visible from 10 to 15 miles out across the sea or inland lake, like we are here. Um, there were different orders. You had a first order up through a fifth order Fresnel lens, depending on its size. Um, what's here on my right is a fourth order Fresnel lens, and that would have been used in smaller lighthouses um, indicating um, a hazard to navigation for marine traffic. It would warn them of shallow shoals or cliffs to keep them from like running into it and becoming a shipwreck. <laughs> Well, we get visitors from literally all over the world. I mean, we get a lot of our visitors come from the Upper Peninsula and the Lower Peninsula as well. Um, but we get people from all over Europe and Asia and even the Middle East and Africa. It's amazing the people that, you know, out of everywhere that they could visit, they, they uh, choose to come up here to visit us and be able to uh, see all the history that we have. So I think a lot of people bring unique experiences up with them as well because you get a lot of people that used to be in the Coast Guard or we even get people that served on these freighters that come through with their stories that it's not just like us interpreting our history and then that's that. You get people that bring their own history to this museum that makes it so unique and, and very powerful. It's a learning opportunity for us as well that we can not only be able to share this unique history of Lake Superior and Whitefish Bay, but that people have the opportunity to share their stories. So